study what POS tags are and we are going to uh, know what hidden Marco models are and why how we are uh, using them in NLP. OK, so first of all, any idea about POS part of speech? OK, so part of speech is. Uh, in, in English, you can uh, tell uh, in English language what is part of speech. So what we do is basically part of speech is a category of a word. So a word can be noun, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective or anything. Uh, part of speech is basically we are classifying or categorizing each and every word in the sentence. Now categorizing it includes so in NLP when we are talking about categories, so we are attaching tags which each and every word in a sentence and we are saying it as POS tagging. Tagging tagging means we are attaching a tag part of speech tag with a word. For example, uh, cat eats rat. So this is a noun, so I will attach. OK, this is a noun. This is verb and this is noun again. OK, so this is part of speech. Now, why do we need this is because in a sentence there is a uh, always a some semantic information associated with the sentence. For example, uh, sometimes it is it is generally noticed that. OK, that suppose cat eats a rat. This is a simple sentence. So after a verb, it is generally noticed that there is a noun. OK, so we have some structure in a sentence. So to make to make it learn easier to make this uh, structuring uh, learn by the machine. So we need to assign tags to each and every word that can be noun, verb, pronoun, determiner, adjectives, adverbs and so on. OK, so today we are going to see a method how we are doing uh, that and how we are calculating uh, tags. So we are going to study about hidden Marco models uh, for text. Now uh, before studying this, we need to understand about the natural language and that natural language consists of a set of rules and regulations and those rules and regulations we can call as grammar and uh, suppose uh, in this example itself, we have a noun after a verb, so it is a rule. OK, so we have some predefined set of rules. Uh, we have a predefined uh, set of rules for. Uh, articles for uh, uh, where we can use articles after which word, right? So we have a predefined rules. Uh, this is called grammar and uh, for learning a, a language by a system, we need to tell system. We need to know the first of all a vocabulary like what we are, uh, what we are, we what we want to know about that language. That language in that language, we have set of words. Each and every word has uh, some particular meaning. It has particular uh, context. It has some particular context. Oh, uh, just give me a second. OK. So first, first of all, before understanding the components of language, first of all, we have to see like. What are uh, phonemes? OK. When we are talking about some word, for example, uh, some words are there where some some letter is silent. For example, R is silent in some places uh, or some uh, middle letter is silent. So we are understanding each and every word by its sound. OK, so this is called phoneme. So when I'm understanding each and every word, for example, kit and skit. So sound is similar. So I'm associating kit and skit uh, together. OK. Uh, so this is helpful in speech recognition. So if I'm talking about phoneme, so I'm talking about the sound of a word. 
OK, uh, if I'm talking about lexeme, it means some words are talk, talking, eat, eating, eats. So all the three words are generated from eat. So these are all similar words. So if I'm talking about eat, so basically this is set of uh, words which are similar or which have some uh, maybe a maybe grammatical variant or something like that. So those words which are associated with a single word. Sometimes there is multi word lexeme also, for example, speak up. So speak up is a word used together. So if I'm talking about lexeme in a sentence, so uh, that means I'm talking about set of associated words. OK, those associated word can be in the form of a single word, maybe eat, eats, eating or maybe multi word where two or three words occur together to carry out a, another meaning which uh, one of the one of that word might not be uh, carrying. OK, so that is a lexeme. Then comes the syntax of a language. So before uh, so all these things we have to understand before giving all before giving the whole data set as an input to the model because a model needs to learn those words as well as their phoneme as well as their syntax as well as their semantics as well as uh, all the components of language should be known by the uh, machine learning model then only it will be able to uh, you know uh, uh, then only it will be able to predict it correctly right so this is uh, so in a syntax syntax is uh, you can uh, if if you are talking about syntax of a uh, maybe sentence or a, a language so it has again a predefined set of rules like after uh, a simple example is noun is appearing after word a is a and the so setting of a and the before a particular word so there is a syntax predefined okay mm -hmm. so for example this is a cat is a correct syntax cat this is is not the correct syntax so basically the arrangement of words so syntax is talking about the arrangement of words now comes the semantics so semantics is the study of meaning of study of how a meaning is conveyed. For example, uh, to sign uh, meaning of a word, for example, um, back and back. So coming back is different and back is also a body part. So meaning of a word can signify two or more things, right? So each and every word can have different meaning. So while a machine learning model doesn't know that this word is this word back means verb or this word back means a noun. OK, so in that case also, that is why POS tags are important because we know that if I'm talking about coming back, so that is a adverb. And if I'm talking about uh, uh, back as a body part, this means OK, this is a noun. OK, so that is why uh, POS tags are important. So before understanding this POS tags, we need to understand the language of the uh, whole. Basically, what are the components in the language, uh, in including the sound, including the syntax, the meaning. Syntax is basically the structuring. Meaning is the uh, uh, basically what it is, what that sentences conveying right so that sentence can be conveying to the same sentence can be conveying two different things same word can be co uh, conveying two or more different things so we need to tell the machine learning model that okay no this is a noun this is a verb this is an adverb like this so this is the importance of understanding these things before we are uh, giving these uh, sentences as input to the model OK, then we have pragmatics. Pragmatics is. Uh, I'm saying I'm using different set of words, but it is conveying different meaning. So will you crack open the door is the example. So will you crack open the door? I'm not asking someone to actually crack or uh, cracking that door. I'm asking to open that door. OK, so, uh, to let some air in, right? So meaning whatever the words are conveying is different. So it is just a uh, maybe a idiom or maybe some uh, set of words used together to convey a particular meaning. OK, so that is a pragmatic. Then we have uh, so where where POS tags are used. 
so that is why we require pos tags to be associated with each and every word in the sentence so that it it tells machine learning model like okay uh, these are the associated tags and how this is useful okay then where these pos tags are useful uh, first is identifying named entities like uh, okay this is eiffel tower and it is of this color and it is of this much height so i am using it 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 so that is why i am talking about eiffel tower right so eiffel tower is a named entity similarly uh, co co ref co reference resolution is it so if i am talking about it it so this means that i must be talking about something that is already present in the previous sentence and that would be uh, that is uh, eiffel tower okay so co reference resolution is there so that is why i need to know which is uh, which is noun in the whole sentence so if uh, in a, in the sentence i am talking about a cat so i know that cat, cat is a noun and if next time if next time uh, i am using some uh, he she it these kind of things so that means okay the entity that was uh, in the previous sentence i am talking about that so that is why pos tags are useful then in the speech recognition similar thing is there i'm uh, i'm saying something and uh, what is the meaning of that uh, that context of that sentence is generally uh, known from those uh, pos tags in what context that person is saying something or whatever if person is speaking a sentence so uh, from that sentence what is what is the probability of occurrence of that sentence out of all the two or three or all, all the set of sentences what is the probability that uh, the person is saying that a particular sentence okay so that is also uh, pure tags are useful over there also so let's see uh, how we are going to use it in the uh, role of markov chain and role of hidden markov model to uh, calculate these probabilities let's see so first of all is markov chain so in markov chain what we do is we basically what we want to right now we want to do is we want to uh, check the associativity or we can say the uh, which word is appearing next after the present word so if i'm uh, talking about uh, he is eating something so i want say eating something so eating is a verb something is a noun so we want to know that after a verb there is a noun so basically we want to know the dependency of one word over the other right so first step is whenever we have a sentence what we do is we generate pos tags of the whole sentence so for example my word was uh, let's say uh, any example so in a markov chain we represent these uh, connectivity using a uh, set of uh, transition graphs so in a, a transition graph i will say okay what are the chances of uh, verb and noun so it was eating something sentence was eating something and uh, i say that because this was a verb and this was a noun so uh, anything that is appearing a uh, after a verb must be a noun so this is a verb and then this is a noun so its probability should be higher something 0.6 something like that but if it was a verb chances of appearance of verb was 0.2 so this is called a markov chain so in a markov chain basically what we are representing is uh, number 1 is the set of states representing the type of tag we are associating with each and every word second is uh, the probability so what are the chances basically we call it as transition probability what are the chances that verb has uh, appeared right now what are the chances and we want to predict this something so sentence was eating uh, we want to predict this so what are the chances that next word is noun or next word is a verb okay uh, given our data set has only two tags verb and noun only two tags were there verb and noun so now what are the chances if if there was one more tag like some other tag o so what are the chances that it will be going to o okay so this would be maybe zero or something like that okay so this is called 
transition graph this whole graph is called transition graph where each and every uh, state is representing the uh, tag and each and every uh, uh, probability is representing the transition probability from one state to another state that means right now i have a verb so what are the chances that next word is noun so it is 0.6 so what are the chances next word is verb 0.2 what are the chances uh, if verb is appearing next word is some other word other maybe a determiner adverb or anything else uh, so what are the chances of that so maybe it may be zero or something like that so in a transition graph from each and every state there is always a, a connection to all the states similarly th this is noun so noun what if because noun is there in my corpus in the whole data set uh, set of sentences uh, so what are the chances that next word is other what are the chances that next word is uh, verb and what are the chances that next word is noun itself okay so we i need to calculate the probability of that so this is a transition graph where we have uh, we have a uh, set of states number one and set of transition probabilities okay now up till here anything that was not clear so we can discuss this again so let's uh, let's revise what we have done is first of all we have studied pos what is pos is categorizing each and every sentence into each and every word into set of category which may be noun adverb adjective anything anything like that we are generating and why we are doing this we are doing this because we want to know syntax semantics pragmatics etc and so many other things are there in the language and we want to learn those things so that is why we are generating pos tags we are associating each and every word uh, in a sentence with associated tags right so if there were three words we have given t1 t2 and t3 three ta tags to each and every word now we have done this now we are learning how we are assigning how we are assigning the probabilities that given this word was tag one what are the chances it will go to tag two okay so we are calculating these probabilities using markov change now before and uh, now let's move on to this one again so we have a set of associated uh, associated values like if this was a verb and next next value is also a verb let's say so what are the chances of that so verb to verb uh, probability is 0.2 so i will write 0.2 over here given my previous word was verb and my next word is also verb so chances is 0.2 so this is called a transition table transition table so transition table represents a set of states on x axis and set of states next states on y axis so if i am moving from verb to other and my probability is zero so i will say okay this was verb now and this is other probability was zero so this is called transition table okay Tra in transition table we represent present state on left side and uh, next state on the right side and we represent the value of probabilities now we will see how these probabilities are getting calculated so we now we know now marco property is there marco property says that uh, given that so uh, marco property says that i have i am in a present state uh, and present state of my model is dependent upon only on previous state or we can say that if i am in state uh, okay my sentence was uh, cat is eating something eating dash so what are the chances of this something is dependent only on eating not on uh, what cat is doing or not for example uh, consider any uh, let's say i'm talking about three states solid liquid 
and maybe guess okay three three states are there uh, now suppose my uh, so what are the chances that it has turned uh, okay uh, this liquid was maybe a uh, water maybe a normal water maybe a uh, rain water okay it can be any water so it is saying that okay right now it is in the gas form okay if it is converting into liquid so it does not depend upon what it was previously okay so basically why is the same thing only on the present state next state is dependent so it doesn't matter what previous words were there so the uh, basically the tag over here so if it was a verb or a noun or something so this is dependent upon only on previous tag so marco property says that only one previous tag we will consider and we will say okay uh, my present tag will decide what my next tag is going to be if my present tag is a verb next tag is going to be a noun okay so this is decided by only my present state only my present state is required to predict the next state okay this is the marco property now uh, let's see there are uh, there are two things uh, so this is this is just marco model so we have discussed about marco model like in a marco model we have set of states if i'm talking about three states <clears throat> so i would be having a transition table and in the transition table i would be having nine entries three cross three three cross three entries are there so that would be state q1 q2 and q3 three states were there q1 q2 q3 i will calculate uh, all the uh, probabilities and i will say okay fine uh, i have set of probabilities and uh, whenever i am transitioning from q1 to q2 i have only i only require this probability i don't require it to be multiplied by any other probabilities i only require this probability now there is one more thing so suppose i am talking about first word in a sentence so in my corpus there were three sentences let's say uh, ram eats uh, apple maybe uh, she eats apple something like that and uh, okay so only uh, let's say only these two were there so let's say this is this is a uh, noun verb noun again uh, maybe a determiner or i can say other verb and noun so i have two uh, set of sentences in my corpus now what so i know the uh, probability of going from noun to verb uh, is high uh, and probability of going from noun to noun is low so i will say okay this was suppose a noun and probability of going from noun to noun, uh, noun was zero or something like that it, according to my corpus okay now what are the chances what what how do i know that next word is uh, ram given uh, initial state so basically i don't have uh, a say because uh, next state is dependent upon previous state but what about ram so ram for calculating the probability of ram i don't have previous value okay so what we do is we generate one initial state initial state why why do we generate that because uh, for calculating the probability of each i require probability of ram only uh, but while for calculating the probability of ram i don't have some previous value for that okay so that is why we add one more state over here so instead of uh, writing it like this what we do is we generate one initial state okay and uh, we add that initial state let's say i call it pi okay and q1 q2 and q3 was there already so i will say what are the chances of q1 q2 and q3 now uh, this would be zero why this would be zero because i am not going to initial state ever i am not going to initial state from any state because it is an initial state so generally we don't draw this uh, tuple uh, this uh, column we don't draw this so that would be okay so i would be having only these three values
because I'm not able to uh, I'm never going to initial state, so I will generate one initial state pi and I will say OK for first word. I would be having some probability for second word. I would be having some probability and for third word. I would be having some probability of going to that. So for pi to Q1, I would be having some probability. So for pi to noun, I have some probability, right? So maybe 0.6 from pi to Q2. That is maybe verb. I don't have a probability of that, so I would write 0.01, maybe something like that. OK, like this. So we add one initial uh, probability uh, state, one state uh, for calculating the transition for transition uh, probability for uh, first word that is for each and every first word that is appearing in my corpus in my data set. OK, so this is basic Markov model. Now let's move on to hidden Markov model. Why hidden? First of all, we have to see why hidden. So in hidden Markov model, there is a thing like instead of uh, up till now, what we were talking about was we were talking about POS tags. Uh, so each and every uh, state in this transition uh, uh, graph is a POS tag. So instead, what if what are the chances that I am at a tag and I want to jump to a word? OK, so for example, uh, suppose my uh, my present word is uh, simply eating so it can eat chocolate it can eat right it can eat something else okay so depending upon what what are the values so these values can be different right so instead of this uh, generating these uh, uh, these probabilities what we do is we make these values as hidden states. Don't want these states as present states. We want these as hidden state. We want all the calculations to be done at back end. We don't want uh, verbs and noun to be known by user. We want only what are the chances that chocolate is appearing or uh, some other uh, maybe anything apple is appearing what are, so I want to know the probability of occurrence of word rather than probability of occurrence of a uh, verb or a noun or a adverb. OK, so I will calculate the probability of occurrence of a verb or a noun uh, back end at the back end and I will calculate the probability of occurrence of this verb at, in the front end. OK, so that is why we call it as hidden Markov model because these states are hidden to the user and what now what it will do is at this time it will calculate uh, the uh, if it has reached to this state if I, it has reached to this uh, it is this is not a this is a hidden state now if if i am reached to this was suppose this was verb eating okay so if my model has reached to this state what are the chances that the next word is a chocolate? What are the chances that next word is a apple? What are the chances that next word is orange? OK, so instead of calculating the probability of state with respect to state, so in previous uh, example, you have seen that in transition table, we generate uh, the uh, matrix with the, a number of states cross number of states or you can say if number of states were n so size of matrix was n1 n one n, uh, n plus 1 cross n why because this was a size of the transition matrix right but here uh, we we are generating we we want to calculate the uh, transition from any state that is a, a verb or a noun or something else maybe other okay what are the chances if it has lead to any of these state what are the chances of occurrence of the word so the size of that graph is so we call it as an embedding matrix instead of transition matrix we call it as an embedding matrix embedding matrix OK, so size of the embedding matrix is uh, number of state cross number of words. So that is 
uh, number of state is n cross uh, number of words that is in the vocabulary. OK, so size of this is n cross v. Now uh, this this is generally n plus one because there is initial state also. OK, so uh, this is clear over here uh, in hidden Markov models. These previous states, uh, whatever it is transitioning, these are considered as hidden and whatever the probability up till here is calculated. Suppose model is reached to here. So for next word, what are the chances that will be calculated from only from uh, the transition value of uh, VB to chocolate? So if this value was 0.8, so model will output 0.8. So that means that person is eating chocolate. So next word is chocolate. So only this probability is required to generate the uh, which word is appearing. So that is why this is called hidden Markov model. So uh, any doubts about this? Uh, just a quick recap. First of all, what we have done is we have a sentence. Uh, in that sentence, we have divided it into set of words. We have also added starting and ending to that sentence, and we have done all the pre-processing, removed stop words, etc., etc. And then now we have a set of words. Each and every for each and every word, we have applied POS tags, and for each and every POS tags. Uh, that can be suppose three tags we have assigned in the whole corpus, whole data set. And then we will generate the probability matrix that is transition matrix for uh, uh, what are the chances for calculating the probability of movement from one state to other, from one POS tag to other POS tag. Now after that, uh, so suppose we want to calculate the probability of uh, appearance of any word in the corpus. So for that we will uh, create a embedding matrix and that matrix will be of size n plus one cross V and that n plus one is the number of states that is number of possible POS tags and V is the number of words uh, number of unique words in the whole corpus or maybe the size of the vocabulary. OK. So let's see. So uh, so hidden Marco model is nothing. It's just a random process where we are just cal just using the previous values to uh, calculate the uh, next next word in the sequence. Just one previous value to calculate the next word in the sequence. Uh, let's see after that after this. Uh, hidden Markov model, we have seen how we can compute transition probabilities. Uh, so for uh, computing transition probability, uh, we will use the exact same formula that we were using till date. So we were using conditional probability right, to uh, calculate those values. So let's see how we are using this. Suppose I have a sentence one. First sentence was they eat. Second sentence was uh, okay, uh, the oatmeal. And third sentence was again they eat. Okay, they eat. So this is a verb. This is a verb. Uh, this is a noun. And this is any other, maybe a determiner or something. Okay, so these three are there. Now, uh, how to calculate the transition probability? So size of transition probability matrix we know. What would be the size? n plus 1 cross n. So that is 4 cross 3. So initial state. Then we have noun, verb, and other. Then we have noun, verb, other. So size is 4 cross 3. Right? Now we want to know, suppose let's see what are the chances that it was a verb and next word is a, uh, uh, okay, suppose what are the chances that if it was some other word and next word is a, let's say verb, verb, okay? So what are the chances of that? So first of all, we have to see what are the chances of occurrence of 
what is the count of o or i can say count count of o and count of o and verb together so we calculate this probability by calculating how many times this o and verb are occurring together divided by how many times this o is occurring and after that anything is up occurring maybe a verb maybe a noun or maybe any other thing okay so that is so count of o and verb occurring together is two times in first and second sentence that is two and count of o occurring is three times after o there is two times is verb and third time is a noun so probability is 2 by 3 so o to verb is probability 2 by 3 okay so this is how we calculate the transition probability condition probability okay similarly if i am calculating o to any other so it's zero because o is appearing three times but after o after other there is no other uh, pos tag okay so this is how we can uh, we fill this transition matrix okay now uh, one more thing so if i am also calculating o to noun so that is uh, 1 by 3 because uh, o and noun are appearing one time and uh, it is o is appearing three times so calculating this whole is 1 by 3 over here now uh, if i am summing this row i will get probability of 1 so every time you sum this row you will get 1 so count of uh, occurrence of that word uh, that uh, basically your pure tag it should always be 1 okay now let's see example over here so what they have done is uh from initial state if you check so from initial state to noun uh we are we are noun is depicted in green color uh blue color is uh, all the other and there is no verb i cannot see anything in purple so there is no verb okay so if you see sentences starting from noun this is once and sentences starting from any other that is twice so this one and this one okay sentence starting from noun over here this one over here okay then we can see after a uh, noun there is other or not so yes so how many times so we need to check so there is a noun and there is other 1 2 3 Four, five, uh, uh. so uh, after noun uh, there is other yes so how many times so you have to check after green so 1 2 3 4 um, and why it is 6 two more are there anybody is awake in the class yes ma'am okay to batao do kahan pe missing hai main bhi kaisa samajh nahi aaya sir ye class tak thoda samajh aayega kya ho raha hai samajh nahi aaya kuch bhi ma'am aaya but aisa thoda aur aise agli class mein thoda pad ke aur samajh aayega you uh, you want me to repeat jo cheeze abhi tak hui hain नो मैम एक बार बस नेक्स्ट क्लास में स्टार्टिंग में थोड़ा डिस्कस कर लेना और कुछ नहीं अच्छा ठीक है ओके तो हम इसको एक बार फिर से डिस्कस कर लेंगे और मे बी आज बहुत ज्यादा था इसीलिए तो इसलिए समझ में नहीं आया चलो ठीक है हम इसको यहीं एंड कर देते हैं और इसमें ये देखना ये सिक्स कैसे आया यहाँ पे आफ्टर नाउ 
यहाँ पे ये ब्लू वाले तो दिख रहे हैं वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स ये तो काउंट सिक्स सही है नाउन के बाद अदर में यहाँ पे सिक्स कैसा आया ये देखना ग्रीन के बाद ब्लू में होना चाहिए सिक्स है ना तो ये गड़बड़ है अच्छा एक ये भी है एक ये वाला है और एक ये वाला है तो सिक्स हो गए ओके तो ये है ट्रांजेक्शन तो आफ्टर अ नाउन दिस अदर अदर वर्ब इसकी दिस इज अ ट्रांजेक्शन मैट्रिक्स देन फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग द प्रोबेबिलिटी वी शुड ऑलवेज सम दिस विद द काउंट तो सिक्स को हमने क्या किया ये जो वैल्यूज कैलकुलेट किए थी इसको पूरे रो से डिवाइड किया तो सिक्स बाय सिक्स आ जाएगा यहाँ पे आ जाएगा सिक्स बाय सिक्स प्लस एट दैट इज फोर्टीन एट बाय फोर्टीन इन सबको सम करेंगे तो वन आना चाहिए सो दिस इज आर ट्रांजेक्शन मैट्रिक्स ठीक है नाउ देर इज स्मूथिंग एक कॉन्सेप्ट है स्मूथनिंग का इसमें हम क्या करते हैं वी एड एप्सिल वैल्यू इन एवरी प्लेस वाई डू वी डू दैट क्योंकि वी डोंट वॉन्ट दीज वैल्यूज टू बी जीरो क्योंकि बहुत सारे वैल्यूज जो हैं जीरो जाते हैं तो वी डोंट वॉन्ट दीज टू बी जीरो किस लिए वी डोंट वॉन्ट इट टू बी जीरो क्योंकि हमारे डेटा सेट में इफ सो मेनी वैल्यूज आर जीरो तो उसी डेटा सेट के अलावा हम उसको किसी और सेंटेंस पे जनरलाइज करेंगे मॉडल को तो जो वैल्यूज ऑलरेडी जीरो हैं वो उसको ट्रेन नहीं कर पाएगा ठीक है दैट इज वाई हम उसको एप्सिलोन में हम उसको पॉइंट जीरो 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 वन सम वैल्यू वी गिव ताकि वो जनरलाइज कर पाए इजीली इसीलिए हम इसमें हर जगह पे एक एप्सिलोन ऐड कर देते हैं तो नीचे भी काउंट में सब जगह इन टाइम्स एप्सिलोन ऐड हो जाएगा सो सो दिस इज आर प्रोबेबिलिटी फॉर्मूला ठीक है सिमिलरली एमिशन मैट्रिक्स होती है एमिशन मैट्रिक्स में हम क्या करेंगे कि एन से हर एक वर्ड का एन क्रॉस वीस का साइज होगा एन इज द नंबर ऑफ स्टेट्स मे बी नंबर ऑफ पी ओ एस टैग्स ठीक है तो टैग्स से हम उस वर्ड पे कैसे जा रहे हैं तो उसकी प्रोबेबिलिटी हम यहाँ पे लिखेंगे बेसिकली काउंट तो अदर से हम इन पे दो बार जा रहे हैं जैसे कि एक तो इन यहाँ पे और एक इन यहाँ पे ओके हम्म तो अदर तो बेसिकली काउंट ऑफ अदर कॉमा इन डिवाइडेड बाय काउंट ऑफ अदर तो हम इस तरह से इसकी प्रोबेबिलिटी कैलकुलेट करेंगे तो इन और अदर टू टाइम्स आर अकरिंग सो दैट इज टू बाय अदर कितनी बार है पूरे सेंटेंस में उसकी उसको काउंट करेंगे और यहाँ पे वो लिखेंगे तो अदर कितने बार है वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन इलेवन ट्वेल्व थर्टीन सो थर्टीन इज द टू बाय थर्टीन इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ठीक है एंड देन अगेन यहाँ पे कुछ थ्री बाय थर्टीन आ जाएगा फोर बाय थर्टीन एंड सो ऑन टोटल इसका सम जो रहना चाहिए सम ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी रो शुड बी वन अगेन ओवर हेयर सो दिस इज आर एमिशन मैट्रिक्स ठीक है दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे सेम फॉर्मूला है uh, उस टैग में वो वर्ड कितनी बार आ रहा है डिवाइडेड बाय काउंट ऑफ दैट टैग तो वो टैग अगर थर्टीन टाइम्स है वो थर्टीन एंड वो वर्ड उस टैग में कितनी बार आ रहा है वो दैट काउंट बाय दैट टैग और ये हमने एप्सोलॉन इज अगेन यहाँ पे भी हर एक जगह पे हम एप्सोलॉन ऐड करते हैं प्रोबेबिलिटी के टाइम पे दिस इज काउंट वैल्यू नॉट द प्रोबेबिलिटी सो इसको हम डिवाइड करेंगे बाय सम ऑफ रो थर्टीन से जैसे हमने डिवाइड किया है और फिर हम उसमें ऐड करेंगे एप्सोलॉन एप्सोलॉन क्यों ऐड करेंगे क्योंकि वी वॉन्ट टू स्मूथ इट ठीक है सो दिस इज द फाइनल फॉर्मूला फॉर एमिशन मैट्रिक्स सो दैट्स ऑल एक बार पढ़ना इसको और ये कंटेंट इज अवेलेबल ऑन कोर्सेरा आप वहां से ले सकते हो ये पूरा इसमें लेक्चर है तो वहां से आप पढ़ सकते हो उसको और डिटेल में